Hello everyone. Good morning, good morning. Well, I uh, took the morning off. I was feeling a little run down. So I'm only going over to the Manchu Imperial Palace and the Middle Street, Pedestrian Street. So I figure five, six hours is more than enough time. Plus I'm gonna take the subway. I'm gonna take the subway in one direction. I might try to walk back And uh, gonna get some water here. This water, this is the place from last, I'm looking for the woman I bought her from last night. She only charged one kwai per bottle. I think this is her, hold on a second. Oh, no water, water? Hi. She might be farther down. Yeah, it's a 550 milliliter bottle for one kwai. That's about as cheap as you're gonna get oh, if it's not free. <clears throat> yeah, I, found, I ate last night. I had some eggplant down at the place on the left. They had some eggplant with some chicken. Well, it might have been that store, but it was set up differently. Maybe it's this one here. Yeah, I think it's this one. Yeah, this is it. Yeah. See how? Okay. All right. All right. So I arrived at Zhangjie Station. Zhang means middle or center. That's why Zhangguo, middle country, middle kingdom for China. And this is called Center Street or Middle Street. Zhangjie, Jie Street. What do you know? Actually, I'm going to get a cup of coffee. I promised myself that yesterday. <coughs> I was reading online and they said that this is the first pedestrian only street created in China. And I think it was back, I think it might have been back when the uh, Japanese took over. But that could be wrong. I was reading it somewhere online. And it could, and it could be a false statement. Alright, so I'm going to explore this later. I'm going to head over to the uh, Manchu Imperial Palace to start. And then I'll come explore this, you know, later. Maybe when it gets darker. All right, all right, I'm gonna reward myself with a coffee. Because, uh, boy, I could use that jolt right now. All right, signing off. And uh, my phone has a compass on it. So, when I know the orientation of the map I have on my phone, I can, uh, I can use the compass. There's these uh, kiosks all over China now, where you just use your phone to pay, because everything, they do everything with their phone in China banks uh, every everything it was amazing so this cost the coffee in china costs 10.5 kwai and it's just one size they don't have different sizes because i asked for a large and i always get a the same regular cup so that's actually a dollar and uh 70 cents so it costs more for the coffee in china than here okay so i've got my orientation the map actually was not oriented, so I had to reorient it. And you'll see that this is uh, a lot of shopping. Chinese love to shop, love to shop. In fact, I'd say they're probably more ardent shoppers than a lot of Americans because the Chinese have it in their mind, the Chinese I know, that when they have a very definitive opinion about you know what they want they, they're gonna do it and they're not gonna be talked out of it whereas you know the Americans I know you know you're like well maybe you should wait on that do you really need it not all I'm just saying the ones I know all right so 
having this coffee. See how small it is? I can get a large coffee in America for a dollar and I get a free refill. Now I think in China you get a free refill, but um, I haven't because typically I get it and I walk. All right, so I'm gonna sign off for now. And I'm going up to, I think, uh, another couple of streets and I take a right and it takes me right to the Imperial Palace. Now the Imperial Palace, I read online, it's like a smaller version of the Forbidden City. And um, it was the capital, I think, for the Qing Dynasty, if I remember correctly, but only for a short period before they moved it to Beijing. I really don't know my Chinese history very well. You know, I read it, I hear it, and I just don't retain it. All right, signing off. Well, when you see tour buses lined on the street, you know you're someplace where a lot of Chinese tourists go. And they love to pretty up these type of streets for all the stores. Sell lots of stuff, food, knickknacks. Maybe I'll look for some knickknacks to bring back. Well, probably not here, because I still have another month to go. And I hate carrying stuff, I really do. You know, if you went one place and you packed your stuff and you left it there, it would be no problem, but when you're moving every day, every other day, and the sun is really, really pounding down, you don't notice it because it's overcast, but you get burnt fairly quickly. All right, well, this is something to do with probably the Japanese atrocities or something like that. I noticed that they have an 18th of September mo uh, museum here because Shenyang uh, was really one of the focal points of the Japanese invasion. And I think it's September 18th, 1931, if I remember correctly. Yeah, the, the Japanese really kicked the shit out of China, to, you know, back before World War II. It was not a fun time to live in Manchuria. With this. Well, it just started raining, or it's rained hard. It's just letting up now. I think it's good because it's coming this way. Those empty, open skies, I mean. So, the Chinese don't like the rain, so they'll, they'll stay hidden from it. Very pretty. You could argue that you know. You could argue that the rain makes things cleaner, but uh, I'd rather have it dry myself because then this stuff is slopping up all over your feet and your legs. It's gross. I saw lightning coming down over there, so just got to be careful. It's right overhead now. Yeah, I knew it was going to rain uh, today. I've got my raincoat on, but it doesn't protect the feet. You see it turns it into a river. Not fun. Ay, ay, ay. Looks like a soldier, doesn't it? It's called Ape, A-A-P-E.
Look at little kids on like a harness. Usually they uh, they put them on like uh, their back, but that thing's got a cord and kids pulling away and almost tripping people. All right, I'm back to Middle Street. Continues that way. This is um, what the name of this road, Shao Dong Yang or something like that. So that's heading north. So that's the direction I need to go if I'm walking back. This is the direction of Middle Street. It's always interesting to walk these things, but I never buy anything. Well, very, very, very rarely. I can't even remember in all the pedestrian streets around the world I've walked, I can't remember buying anything other than maybe a coffee. <laughs> You usually overpay on these streets. That guy's everywhere. I forget his name. Uh, I hate the NBA, so I don't follow any of them. But uh, uh, Curry. Stephen Curry or Stephen Curry, whatever his name is. We've got monuments here. I don't know how they maintain that position. They'll be down there for 20 minutes. Zhongxing One Mall. Pizza Hut. I've been to Pizza Hut two or three times in China over the years. It's okay. KFC, I think they're owned by the same company. That's why they're always right next to each other. Food. More pizza. Tommy Hillfield. I do. Well, I'm sure this lights up pretty bright at night, but we're still several hours away from the hey, US Army, what do you know? So they have these side alleys, and this is where the, all the food is, I believe. Looks like there's a jewelry store of some kind there. So you can get meat on a stick, or juice, teas, milks, tofu, spicy, not spicy, yeah. hot dogs, meat, yeah. corn, fish. Uh, Shenko, Shirko or Shenko is the word for barbecue, and I believe uh, some people told me that this place is really known for their barbecue. So five for twelve. That's what I think that means. That's not bad. Five for twelve. But uh, I'm on a reduced eating plan because I'm too fat. So, yeah. Oh, boo-er. Boo-er. Shishi. Oh, boo-er. Shishi. Shishi. Thank you. Jigger sure, Juroma? Simma. Simma? Oh. Oh, oh. Ah, Booker Yi, I I can't. Shia Shia. Shia Shia Ni. It's very friendly of her offering me one for free. Yeah, but I was saying I I uh, I did I bought some cashews yesterday and I had some left over, so I was starting to get a little hungry at 2:30, so I ate the handful of cashews that I had left. So this looks like a noodle place. And I can smell that stinky tofu. I hate that smell. It actually probably, my socks right now, yeah, my socks probably smell like that right now. Stinky tofu. Wet, dirty socks. Yeah. Hello. Hi. 
I'm just commenting that my wet, dirty socks smell like stinky tofu. <laughs> Oh, I thought you spoke English. Kan kan hendwo chirfan. Good morning, good morning. Well, this is my first time staying in a capsule. I looked at them in Japan, but it never worked out. So I actually took this one down there. It was uh, 50 RMB, which is more money than, than it probably should be. But I'm um, going to stay here last night. I'll stay here tonight, go out and explore. The facilities here are very Chinese in terms of they're not westernized. So you'll see there's a common area here. And... Um, and even the bathroom area is uh, it's a see it's a squat toilet. So if you're used to a western toilet, then uh, then it's not uh, not what you're going to get. Also, something I learned is in uh, Harbin is they don't give you towels here, so you have to bring your own towel which when you're hauling around gear, you know, you don't want to haul around anything extra. So, I mean, I have a small little rag that I use. And that's it. Basically, this is, um, this is the difficulty of traveling this way, is instead of staying at a luxurious hotel, I try to save the money. And what I'll do is when I need time to edit my videos or time to rest and relax and recoup, like I got an apartment in Changchun for two nights because I needed to get sleep and the quality of sleep in these things it's not terrible it's not it's like sleeping outside but it definitely is uh, not as convenient as if you're in a nice comfortable bed in a quiet room plus last night whoever controls this they turned this thing down to 17 degrees Celsius which is uh, cold for me so I normally sleep without a blanket, but I had to put one on last night. All right, signing off. One of the things I hate most about China is that you have people constantly coming up and cutting line. Like that kid in the red and black backpack and the hat, he just cuts right in front of those people. And it's not just in train stations, it's any sort of line. People just have... have feel like they can cut so to be quite honest with you sometimes when I'm in a rush uh, I've cut line before because it's it's very frustrating when you when you're standing in line like I started at the back of this line and I've seen like five or six people cut already see it's up to these people to tell them to go pound sand See, here's another one. Well, good morning, good morning. Just finished getting my ticket at Cell Tickets. Took about uh, 30 minutes, approximately, waiting in line. It was a long line with lots of cutters. So it moves fairly quickly. The scary part is, is if you get in the wrong lane, south exit, now I gotta get the entrance, A1. <laughs> yeah, I didn't eat yesterday. Um, I didn't get hungry until I was ready to go to bed, and by then, too bad, so sad. But I had a, a few of the cashews that I bought the day before, and I had those around 2.30, and that held me over. So this is uh, the center of the Northeast, financial center, I believe, is what I read online, as well as the transportation center. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I've seen a lot of uh, 
blacks in this city. I don't know if they're from Africa or where they're from. The way that they're dressed, I think they must be from Africa because they're dressed in that, you know, outlandish dress that, you know, I don't even know how to describe it. Now, I'm debating whether I get a coffee or not. I think I'm going to, because I had one yesterday. Yeah, I think I'm going to, I think I'm going to wait. I stopped to get some water at that shop on the street, but the shop was closed too early. Because it's approximately 7.30 right now. Alright, I've got to make a decision here. Alright, signing off.